Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our final word show from Republic of Ireland to Gibraltar Nil at the Aviva Stadium. Um, fresh morning for us, I suppose. Um, what are thoughts on the game overall, starting with the line? I know, but thought, um, I didn't think there was going to be many ch changes, really, to be honest. Uh, purely for the fact that I just think with Mix, um, Mix's personality, I think, I, I just think that he wouldn't... He wouldn't take any risks, you know what I mean, regardless of the opposition. And I think he, he probably had in the back of his mind that, you know, Gibraltar were quite solid away. So I think he, he probably thought that, you know, it was really important to get the first goal as early as possible. Um, and so, hence why he played quite a strong team. He didn't make, make as many changes as people thought he was going to. And I think a lot of, a lot of fans, I think, wanted him to change, put on, try a lot of different players, but... I just think that um, it might have been a little bit too risky against Gibraltar, like um, at home. Do you know what I mean? Because one of those teams, if you don't score early, the fans are getting on your back, really, don't they? Yeah. So, um, well, I think he was more concerned about getting the win rather than what the fans want. I think that was more yeah. on his. Um, it's always the way, mind. yeah. His personality is like it's the result is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like when you, when you see. Callum Robinson and you see Scott Hogan and you see David McGoldrick well obviously David McGoldrick was going to be there but when you see them all in the lineup together you're thinking okay well you know he's obviously trying to get a couple of goals and he's mm. you know most people wanted to see our strikers get goals to be fair and I suppose McGoldrick was look, unlucky in a sense we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes but uh, the worrying sign is that they didn't score against the, uh, the Gibraltar side you know was that's realistically when we were looking at uh, a lot of the times, I know McGoldrick was quite good at dribbling past him and Callum Robinson, but other than that, you didn't see many too, too many players getting past him. But, you know, they came here to just frustrate us, and they did ultimately do that. But they were just constantly mm. behind the ball. Like people talk about Ireland when they go away or whatever. Basically, they got we got a taste of our own medicine. Yeah. Like what we did to, to Denmark and that of this world, we, we got done to us by Gibraltar. Yeah. Now, like there's no comparison between the two teams. Like obviously we're f far superior, but we never yeah. thrive on being the the favourites in a game. So I think that that as well. Like I was reading comments last night after we did our after match reaction. You know there was a lot of reality at home as well. Is that you know we do much better when we're the underdogs um, and we have to go somewhere and get a result when we are at our best. Yeah. So that for that reason I'm not overly worried now by the score and like people are like. Oh well, we 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 only got a couple of uh, goals against the a minnow, but I was just like, well, we've we had these types of results in the past, you know, and we still gone on to yeah. to, to do okay, you know. But uh, obviously, the the game against Switzerland is going to be huge, and I think that's going to set up the group. Like, yeah. people are like, oh well, we got beaten by them. That's the end of it. It's like hardly. We're sitting yeah. ten points out of twelve. If you had said that on the like. When Mick McCarthy first came in, everyone would have bit your hand off for it. No matter how you got it, people yeah. would still want it. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I'm not really that concerned by the the actual scoreline, but it did annoy me to see the, the just maybe it was the fact that it was you know it was pretty much the last game of the season for for the players. They just kind of wanted to get it out of the way. Now yeah. they'll say, "Oh, man, for the country, you know, it's not just another game." I get that, but. It had a real pre-season friendly. Uh, I mean, you know, we touched on the aftermatch reaction, but it just it looked to me like you know when they're just trying to get players in to get some fitness type. It just didn't. It didn't have the intensity as you said uh, uh, as well on on that video. Is you know the slow pass and you can see players like Seamus Coleman saying you need to get it out to me quicker. There's far, uh, loads of times where Ender Stevens was out because McLean had pushed in. And Ender Stevens was out, and you know, Hurhan's well capable of switching that ball, but he wasn't getting the ball quick enough. It was just very slow paced, and the first 20 minutes was, you know, there was nothing to show for it. Mm. Um, then things started kind of getting, you know, Coleman and Robinson started getting together a bit of momentum and a, a bit of an understanding, you know. So obviously they combined well for the McGoldrick or the on, go on goal. I think it was credited as an on goal now. So, um, like, at this point, were you getting worried that they might nick a goal, or what? What was your thought process on that? Well, they had the one chance uh, that the one shot kind of in the first half, wasn't it? And uh, just kind of whizzed past the ball. That was kind of their only real opportunity. Like, 
I don't I wouldn't necessarily be worried too much about them scoring. You know what I mean? Like um, I think at the, at the moment they've had any, they've had a new manager for this campaign, and it's obvious that he's just trying to get them as hard to beat as possible. And I, th- I think they're just looking for that one result in the group. Do you know what I mean? I think they're just looking for that one game where they draw a game. And that's it. like them only losing one nil to us would be would be a very good result, like you know what I mean. And them getting a draw in the game would be their first result in, in a qualifier ever. And um, that's what they're playing for. Like they don't press anyone until they start coming into the final third. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, there's just no space. Like you know, it's it's very difficult like to, to create chances. And people are saying like, well, you know, oh, well, if you can't score two or or if you can't exploit space or create space against Gibraltar, then like, how are you going to do against Switzerland? That but people then, whoever says that, I just say they don't understand the game, like because obviously Gibraltar, we're going to be in a position against Switzerland where we're going to be the inferior team and they're going to be yeah. more so pressing us. So Peter, that leaves Peter space, point and, and we have better players to exploit to their space. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which Gibraltar don't have that that quality to exploit space that we've left for them. Do you know what I mean? Which is why we were really never really uncomfortable when we lost the ball. You know. Um, yeah, like, like we won 2-0, you know, it was the last game of the summer, you know, it, it, there's, one la- there's one person who said it was it was the worst win we've ever had, this is worse than the San Marino one, which is just, like, I don't know, I've never heard anything like it, like the one against... Yeah, well, people have a lot of, like, short-term memories, we'll, we'll kind of get around yeah. to the goals in that in a sec, but, like, the worst chances in the game, obviously, there was the David McGoldrick yeah. uh, shot, which went in off the defender. We were one 0 We were going, going to um, we were going to half time quite happy that we were one 0 up and got the goal. But then Callum Robinson had a left footed strike that just went wide, and he was mm. a real bright spark. Then we came into the second half, and himself and Coleman were very very good on the right hand side. And I, I don't get this whole bash Seamus Coleman thing that I, I seen online. Like everyone was, oh, he was he was terrible. He was shit. I was like, what game are you watching? Because for 15 minute period in the second half with him and Robinson they were the only two people making things happen in there people were saying how oh, was the best player in the park for me Hurran didn't do a lot he uh, he done his job he was disciplined he was winning the ball back all, all the time but a lot of his you know his passing and uh, and his deliveries weren't on point as they normally are now, I'm not mm-hmm. saying he had a bad game by any stretch of the imagination and I actually really like Hurran I think now he's, he's cemented that place under Mick McCarthy as probably you know one of the first T- names on the team sheet, you know, yeah. f- for us. So in in that aspect, I'm happy to see that he's cemented and locked down a place. People were saying Jeff Hendrick was terrible. I thought Jeff Hendrick had an average game, but he wasn't brutal. Like people were going on as if you know, he's saying he needs to get out of the team. He's done nothing and all this. And I thought the, the the game against Gibraltar and the game against Georgia, he was very good. Yeah. So uh, albeit he might not have had a uh, a good game, but again, he wasn't brutal against Denmark. He just had to be mm. disciplined. Yeah. You know, people don't understand that Nick McCarthy has specific roles for them, and I guess some people just expect some players to just be Maradona or whatever. Um, but like when I just thought, Col- I thought Coleman's game suffered when when Brady came on, and that's nothing against. Robbie Brady but I just don't like Robbie Brady off the right hand side I prefer him on the left I think he's a lot more effective and it's more natural to him when Robinson was on the right Coleman was able to play the ball up to him and then overlap and then get on to him but when Brady was getting on the ball he was getting the ball and then he was cutting back he was coming back rather than going that way mm. so Coleman would be making a run that way and when you're going that way it's kind of hard to hit the ball that way you yeah. know what I'm saying so he's trying all these cute passes that weren't coming off and mm. you know Robbie Brady seems to be lacking a lot of confidence so for him, obviously, to get the goal at the end, which we'll come to, but for him, it just seemed like nothing was really coming off him, and he he was he was he was actually being really frustrating in, in possession for us because he just kept giving the ball away. Mm. Now, obviously, he was trying with stuff, and I don't mind players, you know, trying to do stuff to to create chances, you know, because that's ideally what we want. Mm. Um, and if if Robbie Brady's fit and at it, he's, he's one of our best players, realistically, isn't he? So, mm. um, last night was the first game he's actually ever frustrated me, and that I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah. you know, he's not really done anything for me. Whereas normally I'd be like, oh, great, smash player, love him. Um, so hopefully now, obviously, because he's got this goal that he can kick on from here. But uh, 
I didn't think Sean McGuire done anything, and I didn't think Scott Hogan for he was just born off so I've been the looks of things and. Mm. I worry that international football isn't for Scott Hogan and Sean McGuire. I really do. Because mm. whenever they begin the chance, they haven't done a whole lot. Um, I don't know if Scott Hogan is going to be, whether he's going to sign for Sheffield United or play with Aston Villa at all. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that kind of comes about because maybe he can improve in the Premier League and then come on to be a really good player for the world. I hope, you know, as long as someone's in there scoring goals. But David McGoldrick seems to be the only bright spark in terms of, you know, our striking options and he's not exactly scoring goals. Now, he did create a really good chance for himself by hitting the post, which was, you know, it was a, a great chance and he created it himself. He got man of the match uh, by the FAI. Anyway, for me, I thought um, I thought Coleman was, was up there definitely and, and Robinson were, were both up there for, for um, a nomination for that as well. And, and that's what I was saying. Like I just don't understand the whole calm and bashing. Like I'd love to know what game or what people expect from him. I know mm. people want to see Doherty in the team, as do we. Mm. But you can't keep bashing Seamus Coleman because Mick McCarthy won't play Matt Doherty. It just doesn't make any sense. No. You know what I mean? Like I think if if Doherty kind of came on for Brady or sorry for Robinson instead of Brady, I think we would have. I do believe we would have got a lot more joy because yeah. it would be more natural to the two of them. Like Doherty can get the ball wait for Coleman to, to bomb on and then play him in because that's how Coleman's effective now Robinson was tucking in and allowing Coleman to go in on the overlap which is perfect Coleman was up and down all night you mm -hmm. know and he was providing balls into the box or whatever we just don't seem to have that composure or quality in the box to score the goals you know mm -hmm. there was a fair few chances where defenders were blocking stuff and uh, you're just like oh my god will this ball go in but uh, yeah as I said uh, McGuire for me didn't, didn't, didn't do anything um, what were, what are your thoughts on on his performance when he came on or on Scott Hogan? Yeah, well, it, it's kind of one of those things where, um, well, first of all, you know, that's that's the one thing about the team itself. Like, if you're struggling to score goals, you know, what teams would we've had in the past where you, you've had to count on bringing on someone like Sean McGuire coming up to change the game? Not that he's a bad player or anything like that. It's just that the depth in the squad just isn't there. You know what I mean? Mm. And um, I, th I just feel that in the middle of everything was just so congested like do you know what I mean it's just it was so hard to create things like Jeff Hendrick w was essentially uh, like a centre back do you know what I mean playing at halfway line and just just switching it from left to right like you know so uh, it's hard for people to come on into that position especially for Maguire to create things when the ball is just constantly getting fed wide and the ball is just getting whipped in like from Coleman Brady and um, McLean on the left hand side and they're kind of more so Maguire and all that was kind of just expected to be the players coming in and late, late for the box to either get on the end of headers or like nothing was getting fed into their feet and when they were getting fed into their feet outside the box you know there's two or three people up, up behind them like there's just no space there do you know I mean there's nothing you can really do like so um, he had like the one he had the one uh, opportunity where he he was upended by Shane Duffy, like, yeah. Um, but it's just so difficult in those games to to create chances like that, you know, yeah. Um, to really make an impact, unless you're going wide, which would have been perfect maybe for someone like Darley, you know what I mean? Yeah. To see what could happen in the wide areas. Yeah, it was strange as well. Though. I thought some maybe like Robin Curtis could have came on on the left hand side. Um, and McLean had a very quiet game, albeit he provided a really good ball at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lovely first touch and a, and a lovely cross for the Robbie Brady. Mm. But that was the only thing of note for me that he was doing. That his crosses all night weren't beating the first man. Yeah. Um, he didn't look like he was having a good game himself. Yeah. Uh, I thought Roman Curtis maybe there cutting in and allowing the space for Ender Stevens to go in behind. Um, might have might have been a good shout, but yeah, I mean. I was delighted for Robbie Brady to get that goal for his confidence, but the only thing is, is I just think it's coming at a too late of a stage now because he's going to be going in end of season now, and he's going to have to come into pre-season and be really at it now when when he gets back in. And hopefully, starts getting a lot of game time uh, with with Bernie because obviously last season he didn't get a lot they like coming back from injury, and then you know they were facing relegation and so on, so. There, Sean Dyche didn't, have, didn't really have an opportunity to play him as probably as much as he wanted or mm. as much as Brady wanted as well 
So hopefully now if they get a good preseason in, he'll start getting a run of games and maybe take that confidence going forward now because if we have, as I say, a confident Robbie Brady, I'd be delighted. Um, people are, like Callum O'Dowd didn't get a look in, which I thought was 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 kind of poor. Um, who else? Didn't get, uh, Matt Doherty obviously didn't get a run. Josh Cullen didn't get a run. Um, McCarthy had one more sub. I thought he could have maybe capped Josh Cullen. Uh, it would have made sense bring him on, just have him sitting in there for I don't know Hendrick or or, or yeah. him just for the, t- the two or three minutes. They weren't going to score two goals. You know what I mean. Mm. So uh, that was a bit of a disappointment. But overall, um, going forward, what what new uh, confident going into the Switzerland game now? Yeah, well, like you can't do you can't do football maths. Like it just it doesn't make any sense. Like uh, like uh, by by default, right? If we've if we've struggled to beat Gibraltar yesterday, two 0 and we've struggled to beat them away one 0 so by default, should we have not lost to to Denmark? Like. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's just people just like we just have to put two and two together. You know, I think the players knew that Denmark was the most important game. Like and and they put a lot into it. Like especially in the second half, they're almost like holding on to the result. And then you're playing the team who's the polar opposite, who's now thinking that, like we just can't let them score or get any space or any chances. Like so, I'm confident going into the into the Switzerland game. Um, because the time of the year it's going to be, it's going to be now the tail end of the qualifiers. It's going to be the start of the season of their club season. So yeah, you just can't, you just can't do football math. You can't, you can't just think because you beat someone that that's going to be the result of someone else. You know. So I, I think um, I'm optimistic now um, that we can we can get a result against uh, Switzerland home and away, mm. and I'm really confident now of doing something against Denmark at home. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even after the five one against Georgia, yeah, yeah. Like I just because um, obviously we've played them on Friday. I just think that at home, the history between us and them late, like, and the result that we've had against them, you know, at home a couple of years ago, I just think that I'm optimistic. Uh, I think the Georgia one's really important. Like Georgia is really, really important. Um, because if yeah, we don't, if we, we don't win that game, like, do you know what I mean? That's all the hard work is pretty much undone, like you know. So I think that's the most important one. And then obviously, if we can get results in the other games, then we'll be in a good spot for at least second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just think looking at the Georgia games a little bit too far ahead. I think we should focus, yeah. take each game as as it comes. And I know Mick will. I think Bulgaria, the friendly as well, um, which is before that. I think that'll be a chance to. Maybe give someone like maybe Michael Obafemi, hopefully he'll be back by then. Mm. Someone like him a chance up front. And if he can get a goal, uh, for, for obviously get a break his duck, Shane Long will probably be back if he's not injured again. Mm. Um, so there's still players to come back. Alan Brown as well, who's just been so unfortunate with injuries. And just uh, every time he looks like he's about to get his opportunity and then doesn't. And then you got to remember that p- players might get moves as well. So players might be a lot more confident yeah. um, Harry Arthur would be interested to see what his future holds so there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to happen over the summer so yeah, I mean we're sitting here nine months ago going where we're we going to buy a win from so to be sitting 10 points out of 12 yeah, people have very short term memories I think yeah. so <laughs> well, what was it how many games did we win in 2018 when we were at Martin O'Neill I think just the one against the USA yeah something like that yeah and then I think there was three goals scored in the whole year yeah yeah and like yeah, and then like someone saying it was a, it was a, like we were saying someone saying it was a worse result than us beating San Marino when Steve Thomas was manager. I don't think people remember like that was like national disgrace. Everyone was like right, get him out. The players scored in the last minute to win the game, and they were still getting booed off the field. They scored, and then the boos started straight away again. Played Cyprus home then, and the boos were just like ringing through the whole place. He got sacked the next day, but. Yeah, that was. I remember being at a draw at a, a Linfield game, and Linfield were, were chatting San Marino over to us. Like, that was like, seeing the national disgrace because San Marino hadn't even scored a goal in I don't know how many years. Like, yeah. So, yeah, short term memory, as you say, like, people just don't remember how, uh, how bad we were playing for a while. We just could we could barely score a goal under Martin Lee last year. Um, it was getting to that point. So, yeah, I think. Um, but I, I also think it's a, it's, it's a thing. There's a lot of people in this country, and I said to you last night when we were coming home, there's a lot of them follow. 
the best teams in England yeah. and I ain't used to seeing you see it a lot now with Man United it's like they, they just they were brought up on winning everything with Man United and now the yeah, fact yeah. that the team are doing not so well uh, <coughs> They, they're like, oh, you know, they're so bad. They're just, they're, instead of just supporting the club through mm. the good and the bad, mm. it always seems to be a case of with, with, with these types of things is that when it's not going so well, not even, like, people are going on like we lost. I know, <laughs> That's yeah. the funniest thing is that we won. But uh, I know, albeit 2-0, uh, you know, it's not like the players wanted to win just 2-0. Yeah. You could see, like, McGoldrick, it's, you know... That the, the one that hits the post that goes in and that's 3-0 obviously and there was other chances there as well that could have went our way on a different day and we could have ended up winning 3-4-0 mm. or even 6-0 at one point but look anyway I, uh, think, but I think people just some people just look for weaknesses and places to, to pick out to say to be negative about like do you remember when we beat Travolta 1-0 away that was only in March yeah. do you know what I mean and people were going mad and then everyone, everyone was delighted then that we beat Georgia and then at home. We just we just drew with Denmark away. And we've beaten Georgia. And Gibraltar, we finished the game you know I mean? on, on the front foot against Denmark as well. Yeah, the sort of like... The 94th minute, we, looking, we, we were the team that we were going to score. Yeah, you can't, like, you can't have it all your own way. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just not the way the game is. Like, um, it's just completely two different types, styles of football. Like, styles make games of football, do you know what I mean? It's just... Styles make fights. Yeah, like that as well. Yeah, it's just it's just the way it is. Like you know, it's two completely different teams with the way they play, and it's probably going to be like that against everyone. Do you know what I mean? And there's going to be a team now in this group that's going to turn up on a really bad day, having a really bad day, uh, a weeder away to Gibraltar or whatever, and they're going to really score, struggle to score the first goal as well, and uh, and they'll have the same reactions. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. just remember, Gibraltar were the team that. It, this is only their second ever campaign. They have a new manager. And do you remember when we played them for the first time at home and we beat them 7-0 and they substituted off the goalkeeper? You know what I mean? It's just, they have come they have come quite a long way like in terms of their organisation and the players they have now, like, you know? Yeah, and they're probably only going to get better from here. Yeah. But um, as, what I was saying about the, the, the you know, the Liverpool type thing is that they're, they're all used to seeing them do well and, and yeah. winning things and stuff like that. So when they come and watch Ireland, they're just like, I'm not even going to watch it. There's fans out there that, that probably supports an English club but don't follow the actual mm. country. <coughs> and it's a shame, like, whatever, like, you can sit around and not judging people on, on whatever yeah, they do. But that's but like, it's just, like, it's just annoying because you'd, you'd want to see. That's like, that's like. You need to get behind the team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If we have an a, a Viva full of atmosphere, it's yeah. a very scary place to come. And that's where, you know, we used to always, we used to always overachieve with stuff like that. With the, the atmosphere was our biggest forte. Is that we would scare teams like you hear about players talking about Celtic Park and you know Messi and that talking about Celtic Park and how they love going there, mm. but it's because the atmosphere is brilliant, but it's also scary. Like they've got some unbelievable results at Celtic Park against Barcelona and all these teams. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So there's no reason why we can't make it a fortress, but it's, it's, it seems to be that people just don't want to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. There is obviously the the, the ones that are there every single game at home and away. You got to really appreciate them because you know. They keep it, keep everything going, you know. But I just mean, these people are just coming out online and just slating the team. We don't even go and watch them, don't even follow them, and just kind of go at what the media say. Yeah. You know, I just, I just don't buy into it. Mm. And then like, <laughs> and the whole thing of doing, like I said before, doing football math, like just going off one result and saying that's going to be a story for the rest of the campaign. It's just ridiculous. Like if. If if what let's just say City lose to Huddersfield in the Premier League, so by well, they default can't, they, they can't now because they're right yeah yeah. But like by default, actually, by yeah. default, what they should have lost all their games for the rest of the season, or if United lost to Huddersfield, it just doesn't work that way. Now maybe losing Huddersfield, you might not win the league, but it doesn't mean you're going to lose every single game. Like yeah, do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's just upsets it's, happen. Yeah. yeah, it happens all the time. Like. Yeah, but yeah. That, this this wasn't even an upset. This is why that's why yeah. you know we're kind of sitting here. We're not justifying the result, but mm. we're trying to make a point that we won the game, and you know it's not all doom and gloom. Like this, you uh, have to I, remember I, 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 as well. Some of the players there have played have played nearly sixty games this, this season already. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Nearly sixty games. It's the very last game they just played. They played what two two days ago against Denmark away in Denmark, True, yeah. and. Uh, like the, the apparently what I've heard now they they trained every single day last week they 
trained seven of the days last week. Yeah, so and they're in the camp then as well in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. So, look, it's the very last game of a long season for all of them. Like, so, look, we've won the game. Yeah, you can see, but, but what you could understand why a lot of them would want to get out if that's the case yeah, because yeah. they they had their season um, the end of season break cut short because yeah. they were all brought in for a camp. Now, Seamus Coleman says, you know, uh, like. If you get told to come in that you're delighted, I don't know about yeah. that now. Um, maybe he is because he's like yeah. the ultimate professional, but I don't think the rest of them are. Yeah, uh, people like John Egan and stuff like, like that have won the league, which you know I'm sure they would would have enjoyed a, a bit of time yeah. off rather than straight back into a, a hard work and session because that's what they said it was. Apparently, um, uh, like I tell you something funny. Uh, last week, um, the, the players were getting their heart screened, and uh, my my girlfriend was was the cardiologist for it, like screening them. And uh, one of them turned around to the doctor and was like, are we training seven days this week? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, I won't say the player, like, but he was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's just like, he's just, you know, when is the season over kind of thing. You know? But, no, you, but you, can, you can understand it in a way yeah. as well. Like, it's been a long, grueling season for them. So, like, I don't actually mind that. Yeah, do yeah. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. The game had a very end of season or pre-season feel to it. Almost like, you know. Or like a, a summer friendly. Yeah, 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 exactly. But uh, testimonial game. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it was that slow of pace. No, it was no, a very no, slow no, pace. No, no, anyway, yeah. um, I think that's really been it in terms of our yeah. uh, final. Where let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are, we're, are we as fans? Are we being too critical? Uh, are we right in what we're saying? Are we wrong? You know, you're entitled to your opinion. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. As always, we're very close now to six thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed and you're new to the channel, please do so now. We'll have some more. Exciting content to come. Uh, that's been me, Paul, and Kieran, obviously. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks very much for watching.